it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I'm gonna do a Friday Reads, glasses, glare, and all. Um, happy fall, happy Friday, and let's just jump in because I've made some progress this week. So, I finished Emma by Jane Austen, and I got my cute little copy. This is a vintage classics edition. I order them from Book Depository. I love this little size. Uh, but anyway, Emma is one of my favorites. I kind of knew that from the movie, but reading it definitely held up to that perspective. I don't know. I just like the feisty nature of Emma. Um, even though she goes astray quite often, I just love her. I love the character development and evolution. I love the um, falling in love with your friend trope. So, yeah. So once I finish, I have two more Jane Austens to read for the first time. And once I do that, I think I might have to go back and read them eventually. Um, just Emma and Pride and Prejudice again to see which one is my favorite. Although, you know, one of the last two could end up being my favorite, but I really think that it's going to be between Emma and Pride and Prejudice. And they're probably a dead heat, actually. I just, I love them. Um, and I think when I read them again, I will read them um, in printed form because I've been listening to them on audio and they are just a delight on audio as well. So just one of those books you can read over and over again. Um, I have also finished um, these two. <laughs> the Overstory by Richard Powers and Washington Black by S.C. Adugan. And I definitely enjoyed and appreciated both of these books tremendously. Um, and I'm going to talk about them in their own video because I think I will have a lot to say. And I don't want this video to be too long, but I want to do them justice. So tomorrow's Saturday. I'm going to be filming. So stay tuned for that. I also got The Arab of the Future, the third one. This came out in the last couple of weeks, I think, or at least last month. It's very recent. This one was released and... I'm just addicted to these. These are um, graphic novels written and illustrated by Riyadh Satouf. And the mother is French and the dad is um, Middle Eastern. I think he's Syrian. Yeah, I think so. Um, but it just centers around his childhood, so it's a memoir of sorts. And I just, I love him, and they're just very rich in culture and political climate of the times. I think they were, um, well, I don't have to think. <laughs> there it is on the cover. 1985 to 1987 is this one, so I'll definitely be looking online to see when his next one's coming out. I just really enjoy them a lot. Let me show you another couple pages, but yeah, my favorite kind of graphic novel, definitely. And then um, I also finished The Woman in the Dunes by Kobo Abe. Abe. Um, this is, it started out quite promising. It's a translated work, a Japanese classic, modern classic, um, of sorts, 1964, originally published. Uh, yeah. Started out promising. The main character is, um, an entomologist, so yeah, and he specializes in insects that live in the desert or the beaches, sandy environments. And so he finds this village where the houses are all at the bottom of these sand dunes that are like, ooh, like, you know, I don't know, way up tall where you can't get out without a ladder 
out of this hole in the ground. And so it's very reminiscent of, I don't know if, we call them doodle bugs, so little, or ant lions, we also call them. They live in the base of the little sand cup that they make and the ants fall in and you know, you catch them. And so, yeah, think of a landscape like that, but for people sized. Um, so it started out really cool like that and, and then it went downhill. Bless, bless. Um, I totally, I totally get it. This was very much like the alchemist for me. I totally got where he was going and what he was saying. It just didn't resonate with me. I found it quite boring. I think that if it had been a short story, it would have been better, but a short story wouldn't have you know, probably wouldn't have built that tension it was trying to build. So the guy essentially gets trapped uh, by this woman and the village as a whole and is forced to just be stuck in this sand hole with her for months. And so, I mean, I get that the talk of, I mean, Suddenly, I, I dog-eared it even, because it cracked me up. Suddenly, a piercing pain stuck his belly. Traumatic, you know? <gasps> his bladder apparently swollen to the breaking point, cried out for relief. I mean, go to the bathroom already. But, um, yeah. I get that they were talking about urine and feces and... Oh, totally the contrast with you know the endless discussion of saliva in his mouth and I appreciated that he used the thesaurus and got spittle and all that other stuff in there and the sand on the skin I really that actually artistically I liked that part the sand but um I totally get that he wanted to pull in this visceral carnal nature with that and the aggressive sex I, I got the tension from this claustrophobic environment and what that does to people but it was just boring but Adams I read this because um, it was the book to film club for the month Adam from Memento Mori um, was leading that again this was the book for what month this is September uh, so yeah, I enjoyed Adam's discussion and his video quite a lot per usual. Uh, and I think that the film, this would make a great film actually. And the clips that I saw on his video, I thought were really neat. So, but I just wasn't led to watch it. Anyway, those are my thoughts there. And currently, I am reading Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. Uh, so far, this is very enjoyable. It's a dual timeline historical fiction. I'm assuming a romance as well. This is centered around um, Fidel Castro and that coup takeover revolution in Cuba. Um, I'm not sure of the correct term there, but it's right when that was happening. And then also... Um, modern day and we're looking at not only that historical event but the contrast between the super wealthy and the regular folks which were poor and the contrast and the tension between that so very much enjoying this also enjoying my Anthony Trollope he is I'm pretty sure my favorite Victorian author. Super excited about Victober starting in a few days. I um, need to finish Dr. Thorne, which Dr. Thorne is, Anthony Trollope is just so relevant to modern times. It blows my mind. Just the whole concept in this one of this patriarchal system where these, um, privileged men, boys, 21 year olds who you know reach their majority and yet are so coddled and privileged and still treated like, you know, 
poor things with their gambling problems and their, you know, other issues or whatever. And then the girls who are at 18 expected to be so mature and this poor girl Mary in this book is accused of leading on the, you know, guy who needs to marry for money. <sighs> I can't even, I can't even today. But anyway, I do love me some Anthony Trollope. So I have to finish this one tonight. I have a 200 pages left um, so that I can finish Family Parsonage, which is the fourth one in the series. I'm supposed to finish this one this weekend. It's like 400 pages, it, a little, little more, 450, 440. Um, so that I can start number five on Monday. So I got to get busy. Anyway, I'm super excited for Victober. I will get up that TBR hopefully by Monday at the latest. I'm definitely participating. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will be back soon. Bye.